This is a University of Otago podcast. Welcome to Otago University Vote Chat 2011. The idea behind Vote Chat is to get campaigning politicians, MPs, to come along and tell us why we should vote for them, tell them, get them to tell us what their ideologies are, what they believe in, what their visions for society is, and yeah, what they want to change or, um, or keep the same in society. So basically we're inviting along politicians every week and trying to get them to come and talk to us, but do it in a slightly different way. We're not just handing over a platform for 30 minutes for them to give their well-rehearsed speeches. We want to try and get some interaction going and disrupt their usual patterns and try and get something a bit more revealing in, um, during this election campaign. And we're trying to make it um, interactive, so we've got an audience here. The discussion today is being filmed in front of a, uh, an audience of students and members of the public. And I'm hoping they will not be as reserved as New Zealanders normally are during um, election campaigns. I really hope they actually um, cheer when they like something that the MP says or boo you when they don't. <laughs> so, um, you know, um, I, I think New Zealanders are way too polite during elections. Um, so hopefully they'll have some questions as well. And this is being streamed out on the internet at the moment. So hopefully we've got some viewers out there and eventually uploaded as a podcast onto iTunes. Now, we're also taking questions from the, the Twitter sphere and from anyone in the audience that has a, um, a mo mobile device. The hashtag we're using is OUVoteChat2011. So hopefully we'll go to some of those soon too. Okay, so we're very fortunate today to have the Deputy Leader of the Labour Party, Annette King. Welcome, Annette. Hi, Bryce. Hi. I have to say that you ought to go to an Island Bay Meet the Candidates meeting because they certainly um, speak up. They're not uh, quiet New Zealanders. So Think, things are different it, in Wellington. It's a, it's a so? political city, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, the Nedenites are very uh, polite and <laughs> respectful to politicians, I think. Oh, I bet. Um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, but you know, I think what a lot of students want to know, at least, is why are you in politics? What drives you? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? Um, you know, um, what, uh, you know, especially someone like you that's in this really difficult position of trying to be a deputy leader of a party that's struggling at the moment, um, it must be a hell of a job. Um, why would you put yourself through all this? Well, it all really started when I joined the Labour Party. Um, when Norm Kirk, and many people here may or may not remember Norm Kirk, probably most here won't, but a great New Zealand Prime Minister, when he won the, the 1972 election, I felt so inspired by him that I went and joined the Labour Party, went to my first meeting and became the secretary of a branch. Um, and from then on, I was totally involved in politics. I come, I come from a long line of Labour supporters. Um, but that's really interesting about joining because of Norman Kirk, because a lot of other politicians of your generation joined the Labour Party, not because of Norman Kirk, but because of uh, protests in the street, Vietnam, um, you know, um, all the kind of new social movements that were starting out. And uh, so you're a bit different in that regard, do you think? Well, I've, I've also been involved in many of those um, protests as well. But for me, Norman Kirk and the third Labour government really did embody what I felt and believed. Um, that was a strong push for social justice, um, an, an international approach, a, a strong Labour um, foreign policy, um, caring about people who need uh, support at times in their life, you know, strong housing policy, health policy and so on, which uh, really reflected uh, my views and where I'd come from in my life. So the social justice thing, was that part of your upbringing or you know, uh, do you come from a political family? I come from a long line of coal miners actually. My, okay. my dad started in the Owen River mine in Murchison at 14. His father was in the mine and his father before him and his father before him. And they came from, from Jarrah in County Durham uh, to the west coast of the South Island. And so I grew up in Murchison and the okay. only mine that was there was Owen River. My dad got out of the mine at 15 when he was lucky enough to get a, an apprenticeship in the post offices, the old P&T. So politics was in our family and arguments about politics with with uh, my grandparents who lived next door it was just part of way of life and particularly union politics. Okay, so 
uh, people want to know what, what political or what politicians, uh, what their ideologies are, especially you know, and where I teach in politics, you know, and it can where is she on the political spectrum, the left right political spectrum, for example? Are you in the centre? Are you off to the left? Where are you? I, I see myself as centre left liberal. That's okay. me. Um, I think I've probably uh, voted on. Um, on all liberal issues uh, in a liberal way, apart from um, euthanasia. Um, I didn't vote for euthanasia. I believe that until we can be sure that uh, our old people, people weren't going to be um, discriminated against either by the places they were in or mm -hmm. by some family members, I wasn't prepared to vote for that bill. But I was there in the time of homosexual law reform. Right. A new MP uh, with a marginal seat, 440 mm -hmm. majority, told that if I was to vote the way of my conscience, which mm. was to vote for reform, I would lose my seat. In fact, I had an increased majority at the next election. And I've always believed that on issues that are about your conscience, then you cannot listen to other people's consciences. You've got to be true to yourself. And the best advice I can ever give to aspiring politicians is to be honest about those issues. Don't try to sit on the fence and be everything to everybody because you'll never win. Yes, I, I certainly agree with that, but I sort of think that conscience votes are a bit of a con in the sense that they let parties off the hook from having to deal with the big issues. So on things like r the drinking age, I think it's quite appropriate to, for political parties to say, we believe this and this is what we're going to do. Isn't it a way of just letting politicians off the hook by saying, OK, we'll, we'll let people vote how they want? I think it's, it's grown out of, out of tradition and history that there are certain issues that were conscience votes. Alcohol, sex and booze, yeah. basically. Um, over time, uh, and there was also once a, a conscience vote on tobacco. Mm. Over time, they have changed. Mm. Um, and personally, I believe there ought not to be a conscience vote on alcohol. Okay. Um, and especially when it's, um, it, they tie it up in terms of, oh, you ca cannot vote about alcohol and driving. Why not? I mm. mean, my argument is it's nothing to do with alcohol as such. Okay. Driving is a road safety issue. Drinking and driving is a road safety okay, issue. That, that's really but, there, but there are still some issues, and you won't get rid of it in a hurry from the parliament, sure. particularly, particularly around sex, but also around the drinking age, and I believe politicians will demand so, a conscience vote. So would you have a problem if, um, say, the Labour Party wanted to have um, a party line on a lot of issues such as civil unions or uh, um, issues to do with sexuality and so forth? No, I wouldn't personally. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm one of those that believe that there ought to be a party line on most issues. Okay. But I'm, well, I'm just giving you the reality yeah. that there will, will be sure. politicians who will demand a conscience. But it'll change over time and I've noticed that fewer and fewer politicians within our party demand conscience votes on issues. But there is, uh, there will be a conscience vote, I have no doubt, on the drinking age. Yeah. Um, and, and your, your and, and I will, I will vote for 20. 20? Uh, and I voted for 20 uh, last time. I was Minister of Health. I think I had enough uh, information around drinking at that stage to say why would we drop it, okay. uh, the, the, the problems that would arise from it. This idea of a split yeah. age uh, I think is a bit of a con. Mm. Um, so I will be voting to, for 20. Okay. Um, so what about the students here? I think there's some here that look like they're under the age of 20. Um, you know, what, what have you got to say to them? You know, um, well, you're I, denying them the chance to do what everyone else in this room often does. Um, well, you've asked me what my conscience is and yeah. what my belief is, and, and, and I say 20. But I, I respect those that want to, to lower it, those that want to keep it at 18, those that want to have a split vote, but I'm just telling you what I, what I intend okay. to do. Um, We've been asking other MPs about other social issues, um, such as um, gay marriage. Do you think same-sex uh, couples should be allowed to marry? I certainly do. I do not see why uh, we would deny a loving couple who had a, a relationship that they wanted to, to make um, a long-lasting one in the terms of a marriage, why we would deny them why we would say it's okay for people so to live in a de facto relationship and we'll recognise that, but we won't recognise a marriage. So yeah. for me, I would vote uh, for um, gay marriage. Okay, I, I think that's really great, but w why doesn't the Labour Party have a policy on this? Why don't 
you all well, agree to. <laughs> well, but it's, it's, as I said, one of the issues that remain is yeah. around sex and booze, and yeah. there's still there are still those within the caucus um, who will uh, demand um, a conscience votes on su such issues. And you might be surprised how many people actually would vote for gay marriage. Yeah, but, I, I think there would but, be. But you know um, what I find find sad is that it, it is still used as a political weapon against those who have liberal views. I, I actually see it as a human rights issue. Hmm. Um, I cannot see why we so, think that it has to be for a man and a woman, but we couldn't see well, a loving couple, regardless well, of their sexuality. We had Hone Haruera here yesterday, and he said... That's rubbish. Um, there's no such thing as a human right to do with marriage. What would you say to that? Well, I suppose technically he is right. Hmm. Um, but, but we do, in, in our own traditions here, um, think that it is a human right to be able to have um, acknowledged um, our relationships. Um, and those that want to have a civil union, that's fine by me. Hmm. If they want to be in a de facto relationship, that's OK too. If they want to marry, why do we say it's only between a man and a woman? Okay, um, we've also